Hello everybody, welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to take a look at equivalence relations and partial orders. So last video at the end I briefly mentioned what an equivalence relation was. It is a relation that is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So just to review what this means, for reflexivity, for any element A, we have that A is related to A. So what this looks like with a point is we get a loop. So A would be related to A. Uh, for symmetry, if we have points A and B, then if A is related to B, we expect B to be related to A. So if we have two points on a graph here, then if we have an arrow pointing from one to the other, we get another arrow pointing back. Now the third one is transitive. So this means if a is related to B and B is related to C, then we're going to get that A is related to C. So we have three points here and we have an arrow from A to B, we have an arrow from B to C, therefore we're going to get this arrow from A to C. So when we put the three together, let's say we have three elements, so we have these three here. Well, they all have to be related to themselves, so we get some nice reflexive arrows here. And let's say that A is going to be related to B. So we'll have this arrow going here. We're going to have B related to C. And now, if we have this graph, that means that, well, if we have an arrow pointing from one node to another, by symmetry, we have to get arrows pointing back. And by transitivity, because this node A points to B and B points to C, then we should get an arrow from A to C, and by symmetry, we get an arrow back. So we get this super loop crazy thing, and basically what this says is that all of the elements are equal to each other. So a good equivalence relation is the equal sign. So A is equal to B is equal to C. So 1 is equal to 1 is equal to 1. This satisfies all three conditions. But we've already talked about that, so let's go on to denoting equivalence relations with notation. So we can write an equivalence relation, R, as this sort of box X. So we say X in square brackets and it's equal to the set of y such that x is related to y. So what this means here is if we have some element a, we have another element b, then the equivalence relation on this element a here is everything that's related to b. So uh, let's call this box a for instance, and we say that a is related to y, or sorry, a is related to b. This means that this is just the set b. So this might be a little bit confusing, but these two points coming up next are going to hopefully clear it up a little bit. First point is either the equivalence relation on X can be equal to another equivalence relation Y, or the intersection of them can be empty. So basically what this means is let's say if we have A is related to B and C is related to B, well then we have this condition here where the equivalence relation of A is going to be the same thing as the equivalence relation of C. But let's say A is related to B and C is going to be related to D and we know that A is not related to D. This means that C cannot be related to B if we have an equivalence relation because their intersection must be empty. So you don't normally see this notation used too much outside of modular arithmetic. So when we do that, we're going to touch on this notation again a bit, but it's a good idea to introduce it now just to get it into your minds. So we need to introduce a new type of relation, and that is the relation of anti-symmetry. Now, when you see the word anti, you sort of think of the word not, and we should not do that with anti-symmetry because 
the definition's a little bit more confusing. So what this says is that if A is related to B and B is related to A, then A is going to be equal to B. So what this means is that if two objects are related to each other, they're going to be the same object in an anti-symmetric relation. So for instance, we have this less than or equals to sign operator. So if we have the case where x is less than or equal to y, and we have the case where y is less than or equal to x, then we're going to get that x is equal to y. Because that's the only way that these two values are going to make any sense. x has to be equal to y. And another operator we can show this with is the subset relation. So if we have A as a subset of B, and we have B as a subset of A, then we know that the sets A and B are equal to each other by definition, because all of A is contained within B, and all of B is contained within A, therefore they must both be equal. So this is the anti-symmetric property. And we're going to be using this in the case of partial orders. So partial orders, they are not an equivalence relation, but they're another type of relation that we should be familiar with. So a partial order is going to be anti-symmetric. So no surprises there. If there was a surprise, well, I wouldn't have introduced anti-symmetry in the slide before this. Uh, it's going to be reflexive and it's also going to be transitive. And with partial orders, what we can do is we can use this little symbol right here, sort of like a like a less than or equals to sign with like a little tail sticking out. Not really, but we can use that to denote a partial order. And basically what we get with a partial order is we don't get the case where if we have two elements, they go back and forth. We don't get this property. Instead, what we get is this sort of property. And I'm going to hold off on that sort of explanation for just a second here. And we're going to talk about some types of partial orders because I think it's good to do this before we get into how we show them graphically and how we talk about them. So here's a couple types of partial orders. We have x, that are less, x less than or equal to y. So this is sort of true. Well, it is true, completely true. Um, suppose we have, say, 2 less than or equal to 4. Well, it's reflexive. And so, for instance, we have 2 less than or equal to 2. This is going to be true for any element. Uh, it's transitive. Because if we say have a 2 less than or equal to 4, and we have 4 less than or equal to 5, then we know that 2 is going to be less than or equal to 5. And it's anti-symmetric. Because if we have 3 is less than or equal to 3, or let's just say more generally x is less than or equal to y, and y is less than or equal to x, then we're going to get x is equal to y. So that's a partial order. Um, alphabetical order. It's a little bit more interesting, but it's basically the same system as the x less than or equal to y order. Instead of looking at values of numbers, we just take the letters in alphabetical order. So we know that a is going to be less than or equal to a. If we order it like a, b, c, and we call that an ordered pair, and that's the whole alphabet, goes down to uh, z, then we know that a is going to be less than or equal to the position of A if A is before B and B is before C then we know A is before C and if some letter X is before the letter Y or at its position and Y is before at position X then that means that X must be the same thing as Y so it's a little bit more abstract there but we can write this using our notation as A is in a poset or a posit with respect to B, C, so on and so forth. So we can show partial orders like this. Now, 
A good way to represent partial orders is with Hass diagrams or Hassy diagrams. So we have a set here, one, two, three, four, and we've defined a relation where x is related to y if x divides y. So x exactly divides y. So if we take a look at our relation here, one divides one, so you can put one into one. One divides two, you can put one into two. Two divides two, because you can put two into two. Two divides four, because you can put two into four twice, so on and so forth. So this is the relation we're gonna look at. And we should probably check to see if it is a partial order. So let's take a look here. Is it reflexive? Well, we have one, one, two, two, three, three, and four, four. So we're good. Is it transitive? Okay, well, we have one, two, and two, four. So we should have one, four. Okay, we're good. And we have think that's really it we have to look for in transitivity. And then anti-symmetry. Basically, do we have two things that are symmetric to each other? Um, we have 1, 2, we don't have 2, 1. We have 1, 3, we don't have 3, 1. We have 1, 4, we don't have 4, 1. 2, 4, we don't have 4, 2. So yeah, we're looking good here. And of course, symmetry is okay because we have 1, 1. So it's also going to be 1, 1. Because if we have 1, 1 and 1, 1, then 1 is equal to 1, which we know. So how do we represent this? Well, what we do is we give each element a point. So we'll call this 1. I'm going to put 2 over here, put 3 right here, and let's put 4 right up here. So we're going to draw some arrows with our relations here. So we know 1 goes to 1, so we'll put an arrow there. 1 goes to... 2, 1 goes to 3, 1 goes to 4, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3, 4 goes to 4, and we also know that 2 goes to 4. So we have this diagram here, and it's pretty messy. So we have these wonderful things called Hass diagrams that make things look just a little bit nicer. So here's what we do. When we do a Hass diagram, we say it's a partial order, since we only use Hass diagrams for partial orders. So there's a few things we know. Let's just label these, one, two, three, and four. We know in a partial order, everything's gonna be symmetric. So what we're gonna do is just eliminate all of our reflexive arrows. We also know that in the case where one goes to two and two goes to four, we're going to get this 1 goes to 4 by transitivity. So instead, we're just going to say, well, we know it's going to be transitive, so let's just eliminate that line. We don't need that either. In fact, we're going to eliminate direction completely because we can figure out the direction it goes, and we know it's always going to be in the same direction due to the anti-symmetry property. So when we do all of that, we remove the re reflexivity, we remove the transitivity, we remove the anti-symmetry from our diagram, we get something a little bit cleaner. And basically what this means is that we have, well, the same relations that occur over here. Just we've made it a little bit nicer. So if we have a path from 1, 2, and 4, this means that we have 1R2, 1R4. So if we connect something to a higher element, it's in a relation with everything it's connected to. So one is in a relation with three, two is in a relation with four, and it's always going to go up. You can draw them from top to bottom or bottom to top. Uh, it's good to specify which general convention is that the lowest number goes on the bottom and it works bottom to top. So that's a Hass diagram. It's kind of nice to look at. It's a little bit cleaner. Eliminating arrows is always a nice thing to do. So there's a very interesting type of Hass diagram, and I'm going to demonstrate it with this set. If A is 1, 2, 4, and 8, and we're going to use the same relation that X are Y's if X 
divides y. So what's interesting about this? Well, 1 divides 2, 1 divides 4, 1 divides 8. Uh, 2 divides 4, 2 divides 8, 4 divides 8. And of course they're all reflexive, we know that. So let's draw what this will look like. So I need to be pretty careful here because we're going to do it without a Hass diagram and then we're going to do it with a Hass diagram. So we'll do that, that, that should be a 4, and that should be an 8. So we know all of these are going to be reflexive, so we're going to have to draw some reflexivity in there. And 1 is going to go to 2, 2 is going to go to 4, 4 is going to go to 8, and we also know that 1 is going to divide 4, and 1 is going to divide 8. We know 2 is also going to divide 8, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to make this look good. So I'm going to put this in there, and 2 divides 8, and this looks like just a terrible mess. So let's reduce this to a Hass diagram. Well, we'll get rid of reflexivity here, because it takes up a lot of space, it's kind of ugly. Uh, we're going to get rid of our directions on all of our arrows, because they're not necessary. And we're going to get rid of transitivity, because we know that all partial orders are transitive. So now we get this really nice diagram that is called a total order. Why is it a total order? Because we can arrange all of our elements in a straight line. If we can arrange all of our elements in a connected straight line, it's called a total order. And that means that the elements are all reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive with each other. So this holds the same relations as it would before, but it's much more concise, much easier to look at. And using this, we can find minimum, di minimum elements, we can find maximum elements, we can find some other least elements, greatest elements, but we won't cover that. Um, essentially, a minimum element is the bottom, maximum is the top, uh, least and greatest. Uh, so what can happen is you can have two bottoms in some graphs. So we can have, say, two total orders as one partial order. It's not really called a total order, but then we'd have a difference between a least element and a minimum element. Or say, in this, if we started with a 0 and a 1 and two different things, we'd have the minimum element being a zero, but the least element would be the pair one and zero because they're at the very bottom. So that's some other terminology you might need to know, but it's generally not covered in a discrete math one course, I'm not sure. So at least it's not covered where uh, this, the textbook I'm using is not covering it. So we'll just forgo that. Anyways, that is partial orders and equivalence relations, so hopefully you found that helpful. There is more material over at trevtutor.com, and I'm not entirely sure that on my midterm or final there are any questions on partial orders, but if you need practice, um, the book, I should probably write this at the end of every video for discrete math, but uh, you can Google the book of proof and you can browse it it is free and it has some practice questions on partial orders in there so you can check that out but if you have any questions leave them in the comments below uh, share it with your friends it really helps me out it'll help them out and I hopefully you guys have a good day studying this stuff